Howdy, it's Kyle talking about the geography of the automotive industry. It's one of the largest sectors of manufacturing on the globe and a very important part of the economy to many countries. But not all of the largest and or wealthiest countries on earth have an automotive industry. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the global distribution of the auto industry. I'll be looking at the largest companies and what countries they're headquartered in, but also which countries are the cars and trucks manufactured in because many companies have automotive assembly plants in countries that are not their countries are headquartered in. And also with changes in natural resource availability, climate change and geopolitics, there have been some changes in the overall industry as well. So let's take a look at the overall geography of the automotive industry. First, I want to talk about the 10 largest car companies in the world in terms of sales volume and not revenue. At number 10 is the BMW Group, which is headquartered in Germany. This includes the Mini and Rolls-Royce brands and as a group sold just over 2.5 million vehicles in 21. At number 9 is Renault, which is headquartered in France, and they sold just over 2.7 million vehicles in 21. Number 8 is Ford Motor Company, headquartered in the U.S. This includes the Lincoln Luxury brand and as a group sold just under 4 million vehicles in 21. At number 7 is Nissan, headquartered in Japan. This includes the Infinity Luxury brand and the Datsun Entry Level brand and as a group sold just over 4 million vehicles in 21. At number 6 is Honda, also headquartered in Japan. This includes the Acura luxury brand and as a group sold just under 4.5 million vehicles in 21. At number 5 is Stellantis, which is a large conglomeration of many different car brands. The company is headquartered in the Netherlands and consists of many different car brands, including the American companies Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep, the Italian companies Alfa Romeo, Fiat, and Maserati, and the French companies Citroën and Peugeot. As a group, it sold over 6.1 million vehicles in 21. At number 4 is General Motors, headquartered in the U.S. This consists of the Chevrolet, GMC, Buick, and Cadillac brands. As a whole, GM sold just under 6.3 million cars in 21, and it is the largest car company headquartered in the U.S. At number 3 is the Hyundai Kia Group, headquartered in South Korea, and this also includes the Genesis luxury brand. The company as a whole sold 6.5 million vehicles in 21. At number 2 is the Volkswagen Group, headquartered in Germany. The group consists of many different car brands, including fellow German companies Audi and Porsche, British company Bentley, Italian company Lamborghini, Spanish company Seat, and Czech company Skoda. And the group as a whole sold over 8.8 .8 million vehicles in 21. And the largest car company in the world is Toyota, headquartered in Japan. This includes Daihatsu and the luxury brand Lexus and as a group sold just under 10.5 million vehicles in 21. The largest car company in the world that does just electric vehicles is Tesla, headquartered in the U.S. It's the overall 20th largest car company in the world and it produced about 930,000 vehicles in 21. So you look at this list and six different countries are home to the 10 largest car companies in the world. But those are just the home countries to these companies, not where all the vehicles are built. This map shows the 10 largest countries in the world in terms of automobile assembly. So you'll see some different players in terms of automotive assembly as opposed to automotive corporate headquarters. By far, the world's number one automotive assembler is China with over 26 million cars built in 2021. That's nearly three times the number of cars built in the U.S. at just over 9 million. And with American automakers building about 18 million cars last year, that means that only about half of the cars are actually assembled in the U.S. At the other end of the spectrum is China. There were over 26 million cars built there last year. However, Chinese companies alone combined for only 20 million cars produced. And many of those Chinese cars are built in other countries themselves. However, most North Americans and Europeans are probably unfamiliar with the Chinese car brands. So here's a list of the six largest automotive companies based in China. The first five, SAIC, FAW, Dongfeng, Chang'an, and GAC are all state-owned. The largest private car company in China is Geely, which also owns the Swedish company Volvo and the British company Lotus. And from what I understand, Geely's are probably the best cars made in China, which makes perfect sense being that it is private and not state-owned. 
Many companies have a huge footprint in China, but the American companies General Motors and Tesla are really going all in on China. Half of GM's worldwide sales are in China and Tesla is doubling its China production in the next couple of years. And the main reason why China is such a huge player in today's automotive industry is that because 30, 40, 50 years ago the country was very poor and not many folks had cars, but in the past 20 years or so there's been a lot of economic development, a lot more middle class being built up, and more people are buying cars. So you figure a country with over 1.4 billion people, most don't own cars, whereas in most of the wealthiest nations on earth, families often own one, two, or more cars. So with increased demand for cars in China, there's been an increased demand for cars to be made there and not shipped there. So yes, many of the automotive jobs are going to China because of lower wages, but it's also because so many more people there are buying the cars. Now let's look at number four on this list, which is India. India's largest car producer is Tata, which also owns the British companies Jaguar and Land Rover. Now at the time of me recording this, this hasn't happened officially, but India is the most populous nation on earth and it's growing a lot more than China is. But even though China is a fairly poor country, India is really poor. So there was even less demand for cars in India up until recently. But as the economic situation has improved for millions of Indians, a much larger middle class, you're seeing just like in China, more people wanting cars. In the case of Japan, about 7.9 million cars built there. But Japanese car companies made about 30 million cars, so just about one quarter of Japanese cars are actually made in Japan. With an even lower ratio of the number of cars made in the company's home country is Germany. German auto companies manufactured about 15 million cars last year. However, only about 20% or 3.3 million were actually built in Germany. Now look at South Korea, about 3.5 million cars built there and just over 7 million which are made by the Korean car company. So just about half of all Korean cars are assembled in South Korea. And you look at next on the list is Mexico with almost as many cars built there as Germany, but there are no major car companies headquartered in Mexico. Many car companies have a large assembly plant in Mexico and automotive assembly is one of the largest parts of the Mexican economy. Over the past 20 years or so, American automakers have been moving their plants more south and south of the border. Going back to the list of countries that have the most automotive assembly, eighth is Brazil. And just like Mexico, there are no major Brazilian car companies. This is almost entirely foreign companies having assembly plants in Brazil. Ninth on the list is Spain. A lot of North Americans might not associate Spain with being a major country in terms of automobile production, but the Spanish company Seat produces about 500,000 cars a year. Seat is part of the Volkswagen Group, so the company is not headquartered in Spain. However, Spain is an important player in terms of the overall global auto market. And 10th on this list is Thailand. Just like Mexico and Brazil, Thailand does not have any major car companies headquartered there. However, Chinese, Japanese, and American automakers do have plants in Thailand. At number 15 in terms of total automobiles produced in that country is Canada. Ford, General Motors, Stellantis, Honda, and Toyota all have assembly plants in Canada, all of which are in the province of Ontario. So those are the major countries in terms of the automotive industry, but now I want to get into the gradual shift from internal combustion engines to battery-powered cars. If you follow the car industry, you know that basically every car company in the world is focusing more on electric vehicles and on new internal combustion engines. Most countries will stop selling new cars that have an internal combustion engine only by 2040, many countries by 2030 or 2035. For example, in the UK, you will not be able to buy a brand new car that is powered solely by an internal combustion engine by 2030, and the same rules for Canada by 2035. And there are also many other cities, states, provinces, and other sub-national governments that have implemented rules about EV adoption. So here's a list of individual car companies and what their plans are for the future in terms of electric vehicles. All EV means that the entire car is powered by batteries only. Hybrids are vehicles that burn gasoline or petrol at highway speeds but use batteries for lower city speeds. This is a list of most of the major car companies in the world and as you can see, the EV revolution is coming on strong. It's interesting to note that Toyota, which generally is regarded as the best automaker in the world, is being a little bit more gun shy on when to go fully electric. That's not to imply that Toyota wants to keep holding on to internal combustion engines, but 
Toyota, more than just about any other company, is focusing on hydrogen. So the big question becomes, if we're going to be getting away from burning fossil fuels in our vehicles, and where are we going to get the materials to make the batteries? You may have heard of lithium-ion batteries, and lithium is the main component that needs to be mined in order for these things to work. Lithium is the least dense metal in the world, and it's atomic number three on the periodic table of the elements. It is mined from volcanic hard rock, often in geothermal volcanic type areas, and can also be extracted from seawater brines. One of the arguments against electric vehicles is that there isn't enough lithium in the world to make all these batteries. But in doing the research for this video, I wasn't able to find any credible source that said we're going to run out of lithium by going all to lithium ion batteries. Based on the current known reserves of lithium on the planet, if every car on Earth were using lithium ion batteries to be powered, there would still be enough lithium to power these batteries for at least 75 years. And that's more than enough time to come up with new technologies to power the vehicles of the 22nd century. Currently, Argentina, Chile, and Bolivia, all in South America, have the largest known reserves of lithium. And interestingly enough, there isn't much lithium in countries that have a lot of oil. So if in, say, 50 years everyone is driving electric vehicles, we're going to need South America a lot more than the Middle East. Imagine La Paz, Bolivia becoming Dubai 2.0. But in the middle of me recording this video, I took a little break and saw an article just from May 4th about a potential large source of lithium in California. Right now, Nevada is number one and California two in terms of overall lithium production, but the Salton Sea in the southeastern portion of California could contain as much as one-third of the world's supply of lithium. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway Corporation has gone real big on the Salton Sea in terms of geothermal power and lithium. And if this is in fact true, the U.S. could become to lithium what the Middle East is for oil. And even if the Salton Sea doesn't pan out as a major lithium producer, there is enough lithium on the planet to power our electric vehicles for the foreseeable future. In the U.S., something you'll hear people say sometimes is that the power grid cannot handle everybody driving electric vehicles. But just like with the idea that we're going to run out of lithium, I haven't been able to find a credible source that says the U.S. power grid cannot handle everyone driving electric vehicles. That might be an issue for some countries, primarily developing countries, but for North America, there is enough power supply to power all the cars if they were electric. But with all that being said, I personally will likely be a late adopter for electric cars. They serve a lot of great purposes, but the one thing where they aren't quite up to par yet is in road tripping. If I have to stop for a half an hour every 300 miles or 400 kilometers, that's not very efficient. So I will go electric after there's been a major increase in the amount of mileage you get per charge and also a big decrease in the amount of time it takes to charge the battery. If you ask all of the governments and car companies why are they switching away from fossil fuels and going fully electric, they're all going to say because of climate change, we're trying to protect the environment. And that may very well be true, but I have a hard time believing these car companies care at all about the environment. But I do have my own hypothesis on what might be driving some of this big change towards electric vehicles, and it's this map right here. You look at China, Japan, India, South Korea, and Germany, what do they all have in common? No oil. Why would these countries continue to produce cars that force them to rely upon very unstable parts of the world? The Middle East is unstable. We're seeing right now just how unstable Russia is. And it really is bad for national security if all of your vehicles are relying on a fuel that has to come from a very unstable part of the world. And although I'm sure the government and car companies don't want to go out of their way to destroy the environment, I do think there's a lot more to this than just helping fight climate change. And in fact, just recently, the Volkswagen CEO came out and said, due to what's going on in Russia, we are really going to accelerate going fully electric. So that's my overview of the geography of the automotive industry with ever improving technologies, changes in natural resource availability and the uncomfortable realities of today's geopolitics. There are big changes going on in the auto industry. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography. I'm talking about cities and states and ranking them in all kinds of different categories, talking about cross-country road tripping and everything I do comes from a little more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.